Hey, what's up, Reddit? This is Mike. And I'm Matt. We're the Hotbox Guys, and today we're going to brew your AML. So we have some basic, we have grains, right, yeast and hops, the basic items. A little bit zanier, we've got sriracha, bacon, some Jolly Ranchers, good old Aunt Jemima, some sausage. And we have asparagus here. Yeah, don't forget the, uh, is this legal? Can we talk about that? It's narwhal horn. We're starting out by uh, heating up some water, and um, we have two pounds of uh, two-row brewer's malt here. We're gonna uh, start there and figure it out as we go. Dump this all in, it's gonna get all, o all over your floor. We don't wanna boil the grains, because that's gonna release excess tannins. It's gonna give you kind of a bitter aftertaste to the beer, and uh, you know we wouldn't want any like weird flavors in our beer. We have steeped our grains for about a half hour here. We'll take a whiff of this fine creation. Can you smell that? It smells like trash. Now that's what you're looking for with the Charles River water. It's a nice earthy, kind of trashy, uh, sort of a toilet smell. And uh, we're about to add our first addition of hops. We're doing some Cascade for bittering. I'm gonna take about a third of an ounce, plunk it in. And there are a lot of essential oils contained in these sausage. You know what, this is actually a pleasant surprise. We have, Mike, we have cheddar in this sausage today. When the cheddar starts to sort of squeeze out as you kind of press into the meat, that's when you know it's ready. Yeah, we're gonna give the Aunt Jemima marinade here. Don't be afraid to really get in there. I'm gonna massage it, if you will. That's just right. Let me make sure this is of the proper vintage. That's good, that's good. Okay, get a nice even coating. This is just good old American hardwood smoke. Maybe smoked with reclaimed wood if we're lucky. <laughs> we're trying to maximize the surface area to volume ratio here to um, you know, make sure we get the maximum amount of bacon flavor to really act as kind of a counterpoint to the asparagus. Well, it's just one pound of bacon. That's all you really need. Yeah, or a, or a handful. We are looking for a nice oily, fatty beer here. With so. any amount of luck, we'll get a nice, like pretty much, I don't know, centimeter at least thick layer of fat. The whole idea of like crispy bacon is just, it's disgusting. I'd rather have my bacon just cooked like pretty much as close to the environment that it was born in. Uh, you can already see the strips here starting to separate and curl up. The different strata of bacon are starting to uh, to reveal themselves. Your bacon should bounce. That's always my philosophy. If the bacon's bouncing, then you know, you're in for a good time. So we have here some fresh cut asparagus. Mm, yeah, you can almost smell the dirt. Smells like success to me. All right, so we'll get about half of that in there. Well, I wanted to save most of the citra hops we have for the end, but I figured I'm putting a little bit now. So Mike, would you mind just passing me that, that narwhal horn to get a chance? What? Mm, that is very good. That is just, wow, that's some sweet narwhal. Send that wiener swimming. So what we have here is just classic Jolly Ranchers. No tropical flavors, no, you know, sweet and sour. We've got you know, red, orange, rockin' blue res. Look at that. The real key Ooh. is just getting Ooh. them to unstick from your hand. We have uh, the bacon on one side, what looks like a river of hops, bacon fat, asparagus juice, and Jolly Rancher residue. You can just sort of see them, just, just poking their heads up, right there. Exactly, right there oh, hello. What we're gonna be doing really with, with our next ingredient is kind of cutting through, I think the fat and heaviness of the bacon and sausage. So what better, obviously, for that than sriracha? Uh, so what we're trying to do is really uh, filter out a lot of the, uh, you know, particulate matter. Looks like a nice, a nice gumbo. At this point, we are trying to cool this as quickly as we can. Now what we're trying to do here is to get down to a temperature of close to, about room temperature is good. Sometimes you can shoot for a little bit higher. Right now we are going to be funneling the beer or soon to be beer. Once we do that, we'll be ready to uh, to pitch the yeast. Actually like, I gotta say at the end of the day, like it's not a bad color. We have some good marbleization going on here actually. And also, you know, some bacon fat that's uh, you know making itself seen right at the top here. Like a delicious oil spill sitting on the surface of your wart. So, at this point we are getting ready to pitch our yeast. This is just a standard brewer's yeast. But basically what this is going to do is going to allow us to ferment the, uh, the sugars in here into CO2 and ethyl alcohol. That's what gets you drunk, actually. And toss in our yeast. So one of our concerns right now is we're wondering if it's um, if the yeast is going to like what we have to give it. What this device is is called an airlock. It'll allow the CO2 to bubble off, 
and no outside air to get in to contaminate the beer. What I usually like to do, especially since we have a layer of fat on the top of this beer, is give it a little... There you go. The little bit of murkiness is normal, but you know, this kind of marbleization you're seeing... Oh, we probably shouldn't have used an entire pound of bacon. No. They didn't specify that, I guess. Cheddar couldn't help things. Mm, no. Today we brewed uh, your AM Ale. We're gonna be drinking this in a couple weeks once it's ready to bottle. We would love your, your thoughts and prayers because uh, we'll need them. I'm gonna drink one full glass. Hold me to that.